forward to this and then okay so we're live now and we are live hello everybody welcome to the crm viewers channel thank you guys for joining our live thank you for your support i'm here with dan and paul if you guys don't know who paul is here's our crypto partner from a project we have been working on luxury io if you guys don't know what that is dan here is going to go ahead and explain it to you we'll be talking about the markets today we're talking about the project we're working on and just going over some basic things and uh what else if you guys have any questions about it, let us know and we'll answer it. So let's go ahead, Dan, switch it over. Awesome, man. Let's do it. We're good to go. All right. So switch over to the presentation. Okay. So let's put this. Go, go ahead. All right, guys. So it's no mystery that the watch market has been in a very bearish trend for almost two years now. <clears throat> so what I did here to get started is um start with a chart from one of my favorite watch analytic websites which is called watch charts watchcharts.com has historical data on different brands uh different different watches it tells you which are the watches that have appreciated and depreciated the most in the last six months one year three years five years etc now this chart that i'm looking at right here is whoops there you go this chart is, you can think of this as like the Dow Jones Industrial Average for those of you that like uh, investing in stocks and bonds. So Dow Jones Industrial Average or the S&P 500. So these guys at Watch Charts put together an index. So it's an average of 30 of the most active watches of different brands. So I think it says it up there how many brands it is here. It's 30. So it's oh, 60. No, so uh, it's 60 watches taken from the top 10 luxury brands. 60 watches, but then they also have the individual brand indexes like the for Rolex, AP, and Patek Philippe, where they have 30 watches. So I was confused with that part. Um, and the peak of this was back in this isn't there. We go March 11, 2022. That's when we hit the peak of the market. And since that time, we have been coming down, 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 and that's where we're currently at right now at 29,207. So um a lot of people are saying well you know watches were were overvalued for about 2 years after covid and um yeah we're live how you doing man <laughs> and they have been coming down for about 2 years so watches are not really investments well the reality is that the reason you're seeing data like this uh, available so readily available is because watches are becoming a more and more popular asset class so more people are are looking at watches as an alternative so just like people buy art some people invest in watches or buy watches regardless of whether the price always goes up or down which never happens every asset even stocks go up and down so here we have the the total market index and you guys can play around with this i recommend that i recommend that you really go to watchcharts.com and look at all this information so you can also pull up rolex or any of the other brands and then see okay in the last six months the watch market the rolex market whoops i went back charlie i i suck at this mac what do you need Hold on, i'm just i'm trying to click my way around and i'm messing up Okay, so okay, so that again, that doesn't mean that watches are good or bad investments. It just means that right now they're on a bear market. Um, but an interesting thing is that back in 2014, when I joined CRM Jewelers, actually I joined 2013, we got invited to an investment conference, and there were a bunch of different there were different investment advisors there talking about all sorts of things, and then they wanted us to talk about the luxury market. So I'm like oh my god i keep moving away from this so i said what do i talk about um my background is in finance as a lot of you know and i'm like i'm wondering how watches have performed over time compared to the stock market so i ran into an interesting ad from the new yorker magazine back from 19 oops, 1966 this is an ad uh, about the Rolex Explorer, the particular model was um, reference 1016, what's I believe. What's the Explorer. Oh, what's the reference on that? No, you got me there. That's a little bit of a vintage. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's 1966. 
And then the interesting thing in this ad is that if you read all the way at the bottom, you notice that it was one hundred seventy-five dollars. Yeah, it mentions the prices. It, it says the Explorer sells for one hundred eighty dollars with authentic Rolex bracelet. One hundred ninety-five. Well, with authentic Rolex bracelet, one hundred ninety-five. So I'm like, man, that's cheap. So I took that number and I looked up the current price of this of this actual model. I believe it was, it was in Chrono 24. I looked at eBay and I came up with a range. And that range back then in 2014 was between $5,000 and $18,000. It depends on, on the actual reference, condition, et cetera, et cetera. And then I took that, I took those numbers and I came up with a with an average return that was between 7% and 9.9%. Compare that to the standard imports 500 which is, uh, was 9.6% at that time, and we're talking about 48 years. So yes, this is a one specific example, and obviously it changes for different models and stuff, but I am sure that you can find many, many watches for Rolex, um, AP, Patek Philippe, and even other brands that show this same behavior in a 48-year period, producing a return between 7 and 10%, which is very close to the equity market especially the S&P 500. Now, given in the last two years that prices have fallen quite a bit, but regardless, you're still looking at an asset that can appreciate over time. And if, you know, if you're a collector and also are an investor, it's almost like killing two birds with one stone. Um, okay. Go back over here. So, okay. So yeah, so that was pretty interesting, and then that opened my eyes because I'm like, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not really into luxury. If you see me, sometimes I'm wearing a G-Shock, like right now, <laughs> and most of the times I'm not even wearing a watch. So either that or the vintage, this one too. Or Charlie's vintage, I kind of like that. But um, I'm not a very, I'm not really into luxury. But the fact that you can invest in a luxury product or you can buy a luxury product and still have it appreciate over time, then I'm like, man, that's interesting. And I just, I liked watches at that point even more because of that reason. And um, one last thing I wanna mention before I turn it over to Paul is that right at the peak of the market, first quarter of 2022, there was a Wall Street firm, a Wall Street firm um, that we met with in Brickle. And they were thinking of creating a fund for, to invest in luxury in luxury assets, luxury assets like watches, for example. So it was interesting. There's definitely an, an, an interest in investing in watches and other asset classes, other luxury products like that, um, for companies like these to start accumulating the data, standardizing the data. And another interesting thing about WatchChart is that now Morgan Stanley, which is a very popular investment bank, they produce a report, periodic report, using the watch chart data. So there's an interest there. That's only going to increase as watches become more and more standardized over time and more people start using different investment vehicles to invest in them. So the interest in investing in real-world assets like watches is high and will only continue to get to go grow higher over time. Uh, any questions so far here in the chat? Uh, yeah, so Michael Hernan said, is it a good time to buy then? Is so that... is it a good time to buy? That's always a good question. Um, Michael, like nobody has a crystal ball, so we don't know if watches are going to go up tomorrow or 12 months from now or 36 months from now. So my opinion is that they eventually will go back up because, like I said, there's more interest in real-world assets. Um, by people that, you know, not necessarily want to buy a watch because they like it, but more because they know it's going to appreciate also over time. So it will go up. We just don't know when. But that's not really important as an investor because investing is about diversification. And to some people, even diversifying a portion of their assets into the watch market right now makes sense. And especially now that the crypto market has been going up. Like Bitcoin is over forty thousand dollars a a coin right now. Um, it's back up that high. Yeah. Oh, nice. It's like forty three thousand. That's crazy. That's crazy. So 
Remember that a lot of people said that the only reason the watch market went up, well, they said different things, but they said that the watch market went up because a lot of people had money in crypto and they were buying watches, which well, part um, is partially true. My opinion on that was a lot of people, can you switch the camera a little bit? Yeah, uh, and you could tell me if I'm wrong because you have more charts and data. Mine is more just from the experience of people. Mm -hmm. So maybe we could make a like a, a an opinion on this. Okay. But mine was, there was a lot of people who were stuck at home and yes, a lot of people lost money, but the people who were making money with crypto, with with um, social medias, with OnlyFans, with whatever it was, they couldn't go out to restaurants. They couldn't travel. They couldn't do that. So they were buying tangible goods for just to have them. And if you notice, Amazon broke records during that. So we got we um sorry. On Amazon, like they they broke record sales. Watches went up in crazy yeah. price. Cars went up in crazy price. But travel locations, restaurants, clubs, bars, all those died out because you couldn't do it. Well, at the so beginning I, when you couldn't travel. Yeah, yeah, when you couldn't travel. So I feel like people were just like, you know what? I don't care what it costs. I'm making money. I want to spend it on something because, you know, I'm especially here in the U.S., we're consumers and we like to consume. Yeah. So I feel like that's what shot up the price. Well, that's the general reason. I'm talking about crypto itself. Oh, you're talking? Yes. Because remember that year, I think it was 2021. Well, that I broke the record of the highest sale. And it was, it was a crypto sale. 400 something thousand dollar Richard Mill. Yeah. But also that year, we broke the record in percentage of sales from crypto. We had around 9% of our sales actually came from crypto during nice. the peak of the market. Yeah. But remember, now crypto is rebounding, but watches are still falling. So some people are beginning to wonder. Is crypto going to lead the way eventually for watches in the next six to twelve months? That's the part that um, is left to to be seen. I think I think what the thing is though with the watches that's a little bit different is is that Rolexes are producing a million plus watches, almost two a year. So there was there was a ridiculously high inflated number for. A, a product that's produced so i feel like it's it doesn't it's not going to follow exactly like crypto but there are certain watches that are going to continue to go up so i feel like mass produced things yeah it's it's that is going to soften up and i don't think it's going to go crazy and blow up again but i feel like maybe more exclusive pieces which it makes sense like uh with certain Patek, certain aps certain uh, vintage pieces like that can tie directly into I mean, I think, yeah, crypto. maybe vintage pieces, but in general, the, I, I the, think a regular the, mass the average are not going up. Maybe. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't think a regular Submariner is going to go back up, shoot to 20 grand again. But is it a possibility something like a Pepsi can? Yes, because oh, it's not going to go up 20 grand in the amount of time that it did when they pumped all this money and governments pumped all this money into the system. That's what I'm saying. And people were like just buying stuff, but eventually an asset i mean if you look at the example there of the rolex explorer it's 48 years of history it wasn't just four months so yes even though what happened since 2020 to 2022 had never happened before yes um and now we're kind of has that ever happened from that has that ever happened period like i know watches never I mean, happened not in my that. lifetime in my lifetime i've never seen that happen so um you know eventually over time if the Explorer appreciated for 48 years, these watches are becoming, you know, more desired uh, by, by more people because they realize, man, that, you know, the, it's this is a collectible. Yeah, it's, so, not, it's not because of functionality and people don't understand that all the time. They're like, oh, why do I need a watch? Because I got my phone and, and you know, I can just see the time on my phone. But nobody buys a collectible for functionality usability it has nothing to do with it i know it's crazy but i kind of had like that harsh reality slap in the face just the other day with my vintage watch because i put on the time grapher and it's losing like 30 seconds a day i'm like man i want the watch to be accurate but then i realized i never really look at the time on the watch and yeah, if how many and times if, a day and if do you actually and look if, at the time and the if watch? it's off by a couple seconds or a minute or two it's not going to really make a difference if i'm going to if i want to be accurate i just have i have my phone so i think it's more like you say it's collectible it's a novelty and it's it's something of, of asset like for example this vintage submariner if that was 159 dollars this must have been a few hundred bucks back in mm -hmm. the days and now it's over ten thousand dollars and it's not even in the best condition or a perfect so that's a, one that's a good point i think it 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 leads me to this question that i want to address from mario diaz yeah so um, let's, let's pin it. and then let's i'm gonna i'm gonna tie that to 
pause presentation here and take over. Exactly. That's okay. So Mario. Mario Diaz says, uh, the stock market is at an all-time high and watch market is down. Nice piece. The stock market is on an all-time high and watch market is down. So disposable income has very little to do with the investment. Um, well, yes and no, because in 2020, you had the injection of capital. You know, you had all these this, this free money uh, coming into the economy and people did buy, you know, watches with it and a lot of other goods. And they just accelerated the price in these goods. And now when we're going through, you know, a, a recession worse than two years ago that's the last thing that people are buying but it doesn't mean that that was just a fad okay it was just an accelerated period and then now you're going through the deceleration of prices but the fact that people have been investing or accumulating watches and collecting watches for decades means that that will continue i mean not at that you know that rate of prices you know doubling in one year that's not gonna happen yeah but uh but it will over time now he mentioned something else. It was an investment fad. It was an know? investment fad like NFT. Like NFTs. So also, people love to just generalize about things like watches are investments or watches are not investments. But it doesn't have to be black or white. It, well, it depends on how... You know, there's some people that make money buying art. Well, I'll, give, I'll, give a, I'll give a perfect example. In 2013, 2014, 2015... 5980 rose gold was 70 grand. I'm sorry, but uh, when they first came out, there were 70, 80 thousand dollars because at that time it was on a leather strap when they first came out, and those were 60 thousand. And nobody really had a hundred thousand dollar watch on their wrist. I'm not telling you that there it didn't exist, but it wasn't common now in the watch game. If people don't have a hundred thousand on their wrist, it's looked at as a regular watch, and it's crazy because of. Prices got so inflated so quickly and with the power of social media that back then the watches weren't really for celebrities or for people with, with like money. And and then like people who, who enjoyed watches would buy Rolexes. But even my dad, who was a watch enthusiast, never knew about – like he knew about Patek, but it wasn't something like – you. It wasn't very common. You probably saw well, yeah, so you probably saw one or two Pateks in your lifetime on an old man. It wasn't like young people had – and I'm not saying it was it wasn't possible, but it wasn't common at all. So I feel like it's like you said, it's it's you can't say it's black or white because oh hi or So I don't I don't think that we're that you can generalize and say it's black or it's white because can a 5980 protect be an investment? Yeah, if you bought it in 2015, 2016 when they were 90 and they they're still close to 200, right? Yeah, it it's still an investment, but at the peak of the market, they were at 350. If you bought it at 350, like we did with certain pieces, and right. it came down to 200, oh, it's not an investment. Yeah, it's an investment. But we still mean, but that's we're still looking at a, a fairly know, two new to watch. seven year period, which is very. I'm talking about going back decades. You you still see the relationship of these prices appreciating in value. Look at this. Um, it's just that people people are very short term thinkers. So like watches are falling in prices, so now watches are bad. They're not investments, and that's not true. The same with NFTs. So yeah, Mario NFTs. has another. Yeah. So the same as with NFTs, people are like, okay, NFTs are a scam. Not necessarily. The technology behind NFTs is solid. And the fact that more and more people are interested in tapping into assets as to diversify, right? Because not everybody just decides to invest in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds because that's just what we're fed every day, right? Or real estate or whatever. If you have enough money in your portfolio... You want to invest in other assets, so would it be Picasso or a art is a, a perfect Pollock painting be considered an investment, or that's collecting to like touch on Mario's? Well, that's ideas. if you use the same logic as a lot of these people that say, "Hey, yeah, because watches he said, are just meant to be worn." Then, yeah, because okay, he says collecting and investment, collecting and investing are opposite ends. No, it, it is not, and that's just that's a just that's a very black and white way to put it. It depends on your objective. Some people just want art on their walls as decoration, but some people are more savvy and they actually buy one and put art on their walls. And some people put it in vaults. People put it in vaults, which is something that we're going to discuss today. Uh, and the same as NFTs, if you want to tap into an asset that is not a traditional asset, right? Because again, stocks, bonds, and mutual funds are not the only thing you can invest your money in. 
So if you want to tap into something untraditional, if you want to tap into something untraditional, like art, like um, watches, um, NFTs can actually, the technology behind NFTs can actually help you do that. So that was a long intro, but I'm going to go ahead and let <laughs> Paul touch upon that because we've been working on this project, guys, for... So do we remove the... the yeah, we've been working on this project for about 12 months with our Web3 partners. Paul is one of them. And, um, it, and you're going to see how the technology behind this stuff can actually help you tap into these assets. And it's, you can't say all NFTs are scams, just like you can't say watches are not investments. It's not as simple as that. It all depends on your objective. But the technology behind NFTs is widespread, in, especially in the financial markets. Uh, and you're going to see that being used to tokenize or, to, or allow people to tap into real world assets in a very efficient and safer way. So Paul, go ahead, take it over. Yeah, thank, thanks for the introduction, Dan. I think I'd um, add, add a few points about what you just said about NFTs and technologies and generalizations. Um, I'm, I'm, a real, I'm a real tech guy. And one thing, one thing I think about these sorts of generalizations you hear in the space is like NFTs, for example, um, and uh, blockchain in general, how I look at it, it's like it's a decentralized trust. Uh, we're bringing decentralized trust to all sorts of business use cases. So there's, there's so many really interesting uh, uses of NFTs. NFTs being used to replace things like DocuSign, um, being you know being used as certificates uh, for various things, being used as assets within video games. Um, of course, NFT. When I speak to my mom, uh, she just thinks of monkey JPEGs nice. and the the funny little uh, crypto punks types things. And yeah, that that was a speculative mania, uh, similar to like uh, tulip fever or whatever. Right, two years ago, it was all great fun. If you made some money there, uh, but as a spectator, you know there there is a good there is a good story to say that it was a load of nonsense in in all reality. Um, but uh, in terms in terms of what tech can actually do, again going back to that decentralized trust part, if we talk about the uh, luxury platform that uh, we've been working on together with CRM, let me just uh, share my screen. Behind us. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So what, what we've been looking to do is um, looking in the collectible space for people who are looking to either buy, uh, collect, invest, you know, depending on what you want to do, for whatever reason you want to own one of these items. Um, you, you run into an issue as a retail, as a retail buyer where you're, you're paying the retail price. But what if you want to resell it? You have you know, different aspirations for why you're buying it. If you want to resell it, you end up having to go back to a dealer. Um, they're going to give you 10, 20% lower price, and you have that um, you have that natural sort of friction in how much the costings are. So uh, working with Dan and the team in the watch space, this is uh, what we've created is uh, it's an NFT platform where the NFTs represent the real world assets, in this case, watches. Um, so if we scroll down, you can see some of the latest releases. This is the inventory from CRM Jewelers. Scroll up so we can check the inventory out. We've got each of these items. So you'll see they're priced in USDC, which is one of the most popular blue chip stable coins within the crypto space. So if you've got, in this case, $74,000 of USDC, you can come to our platform, press here, connect your wallet. And this works in like a common uh, DeFi way, you connect through MetaMask, um, and then you make your purchase you send the usdc and you receive the nft which represents uh, your claim on this watch which is held by crm and then at that point you know if you want to wear the watch you can uh, you can redeem it pay the pay any applicable sales tax either post it to you or you go get it at the store um or if you want to be an investor in it or speculate on it to use that word um you've now got this item held as an nft if somebody else wants to buy it from uh, from the platform um, and you you offer a price, they can they can buy it from you. So you can offer it at a price higher than you paid, of course. And um, you know if there's a market for it, maybe it sells. Um, but the key point here is, as a buyer of it, even though it's now owned by you, uh, no longer owned by the dealer, as it's in their custody, I trust that it's an authentic watch. Um, I know that they've checked it. Um, all those points. So. From a um, you know from the second customer's point of view, I'm still dealing with CRM in terms of the trust. I'm not dealing with a random person trying to sell a secondhand watch, which means that you can 
you can maintain that high price that that uh, you know uh, that retail price that you'd pay at dealers. That's the main that's the main points of our platform. So I guess who we're we're looking to appeal to are one. Obviously, there are people in the crypto space you know, who've, who've made some good money through crypto. So uh, shout out to any of the crypto guys. Um, if you're in the market for a watch and you want to, you know, let's let's pick a good one. You want to buy um, you want to buy a Rolex Submariner in DeFi properly through MetaMask. Uh, you know, not not converting your um, crypto profits into cash and effectively paying cash, but genuinely doing it in DeFi uh, using uh, proper Web3 technology. Um, yeah, we're one of the first platforms to offer that. And then for you know people who are newer to crypto, if you want to speculate, um, but you don't want to hold that watch in your house, um, and you know, let's say you want to hold it for six months, 12 months, uh, you can leave it in a safe place at CRM. And then any uh, second person who may buy it from you, it's kind of like they're just buying it straight from CRM in terms of uh, their experience. Uh, but you get to you get to have that economic exposure. And um, my thoughts, you know, from an investment point of view, is um, I really like to. One conversation I'm always having with my friends, or you know, having having with my dad, is like um, people really confuse investment, speculation, and asset allocation. So I'm a big believer in asset allocation. You know, you're probably going to make most of your money from whatever your actual day job, you know, whatever that is. And then you have a certain amount of your wealth held in your in your house, uh, in stocks, in bonds, uh, you know, blue chip stocks. You know, if you're American, the S&P 500, if the US economy does well, it's going to go up, probably going to treat you well on a 20 year basis. Certain amount in bonds and then, you know, certain amount in gold, just in case the world comes to the end. Right. If you've got five percent of your allocation in gold, you'll probably be all right. Probably want to keep that in your house. Um, and then there's a certain amount that you want to have in collectibles in wine, you know, if if that matches your investment objectives. And one of the issues that people have in collectibles, I said, is that friction of when you want to sell it, you can um, you can have trouble with liquidity. So we're trying to um, play into that space and uh, basically give people a digital way of you know having a trust in the products they're buying um, as individual consumers. Uh, agree 100 percent and i think like what you said objective is the key here and i think too many people confuse their personal objective or opinion uh as facts so you know when people say i don't i wear i buy a watch and i'm just i'm, I'm addressing mario because he's perfect he's bringing all these <laughs> let me go ahead yeah let me pin this yeah yeah pin the, pin the comment this one yeah that one yes so this is a perfect example. I buy a watch for my personal property. You hope to get a reasonable market value and hope it will increase, but it will never do, but will never do as an investment instrument. And that it's fine because that's his particular objective, but it doesn't mean that everybody feels the same way. So objective is key here. If you believe that watches are an alternative asset class and you're approaching it from either a pure investment perspective or partial investment perspective as okay i like watches but i also like the fact they appreciate over time so i am going to buy ones that do that then it's all based on your particular objective that's so since i'm not too aware of the crypto market and i get a little confused of the nfts let me question and explain from what i've learned and you tell me if i'm wrong or right for the people who don't know anything about this mm -hmm. my understanding and why what i see from being um not working on this project directly with you guys on it what do i see a good use for this um and then no next says how does it affect the watch community creating uh avenues for individuals to sell watches they do not own and increase price well it's not watches it's not that they own. do not own it's they watches do own that them. they do own and how does this affect the watch community and how how do i see this being used well I see a perfect example from my understanding, maybe for like a consignment piece. You own the piece, however, it's being safe kept at CRM, and you can see this on a public right a website with the NFT. Code. Of course, of course. So that makes sense for for things like the um, the Anthony Ferrer scandal. That's like, oh, how do I know that he didn't get my watch to sell it to somebody else? It's a different watch and all that. Well, you can see your watch with the serial number is there. Of course, right? Yes. So it's, it's verifiable in the blockchain. So why would somebody ever want to own a watch that they don't physically have in their house? Well, people do it all the time. It's consignments. You own it, and maybe you 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 owned it, and then you well, want to leave it after. Consignment is different. It's just that you don't have it with you, and you have it somewhere else to be sold. But 
I think more important than that is the effect of having the ability to tap into watches as an asset class. It's just going to make their price more transparent uh, in, in the market because before you had to go to like a dealer or you know you have to shop around or whether you want to buy or sell your, your watch, the liquidity is not there. It's, it's going to take you a while, right? Now with these with these um, marketplaces, you can tap into liquidity much faster. You can make, and then some people are like, oh yeah, but you know, it's flipping. But the thing is that flipping to some degree or you know, quick sales or being able to quickly buy or sell your asset, whether it's a watch or whether it's a piece of art or whatever, it's actually a positive thing because when you want to sell your watch, do you want to get 20% less than the current market value or do you want to get very close to the market value? Through the NFT technology, you're going to be able to tap into the actual market value of that watch because buying and selling an NFT is much easier than taking your physical watch someplace or, or looking for a buyer of that watch in the current market. You understand what I mean? Yeah. So it will increase liquidity on asset classes where there is an interest like watches. And that's only positive for the watch market, despite what the peers that just want only the select few to participate so in the market, in a it's going to be a case. widespread acceptance of that asset class. So in a crazy case like this, for, for me to understand a little bit better, if I saw a watch at auction at an event, so like at a Sotheby's or something like a very rare vintage Rolex or Patek Philippe mm -hmm. that belong to a banker, then I know this is being safe kept in some type of museum or, or vault or something like that. And I want to buy the watch because I think that it's a good piece, like an art piece, for money to put away, for example, like, um, I don't know, the Paul Newman, they told me I sold for $17.8 million. Mm -hmm. Let's say I yeah. bought that with the intentions that, yeah, maybe I want to give it to my grandkids and them sell it in 20, 30 years. That's something that we can use a program like this for, right? Because I can own the piece, but I have to take care of it, but you can sell it quickly. Of course, there's, a, there's a security there. issue also with storing assets. You know, if you had, uh, you know, very expensive watch collection in your home, um, it, it could be stolen. Even, even when you have it at a bank, there's questions that, you know, what happens if there's a bank trade here, you know, what happens to your assets? So, uh, the, the ability to be able to buy and, and sell your asset without having to physically store it or, or transport the asset from one location to another, it's, it's a plus uh, as an investor. I get it. Now you, we got a couple we, questions here yeah. from Michael Hernandez. He said, okay, I kind of understand the holding market. What is okay, the click, extra click it so you can put in a question for you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I kind of understand. Paul, you want to address that? Um, yeah, so I'll read it out and I'll address it. Okay, I kind of understand the holding market. What's the extra fee to redeem the asset? Um, literally, literally just the sales tax. So if you're an in state buyer to Florida, the Florida sales tax, if you're to a state that doesn't pay sales tax, um, uh, n nothing, I guess. And then if you're an international buyer in your country's got VAT, VAT, of course. So li literally just uh, sales tax. Okay. And then Michael Hernandez has another question. Here. If you redeem asset after 15 years, you still have it at the same price. You have it holding at the inf the inflation price. The thing is, like the NFT is going to going to fluctuate based on market demand for that asset. So now you just created a vehicle that would actually price your asset. Uh, more actively, and that's what we're talking about—the liquidity aspect of it. It's a plus, uh, yeah. as opposed to you know, how do you know what the value of that watch is? All of these websites, like watch charts and marketplaces, that actually allow you to um, to tie an NFT to the value of a real-world asset are positive for for collectors. Well, I think he's saying more is it like if you if you let's say you left the, you bought a watch on this nft marketplace and you left it at the safekeeping 15 years when you go to redeem it is it at the same price you don't have to pay anything you already own the watch you just have to pay the sales tax on it yeah you purchase I mean, the watch uh, i guess i guess my, my interpretation of that question is it's uh the same as if you bought a stock 10 years ago the price that you have on your um on your bookkeeping is the 10 year ago price so let's let's use for example you buy ten thousand dollar watch uh, on our platform today um, and in, in 15 years time, it's worth, um, I don't know, 25, 25 grand. Um, then, you know, as far as the paperwork's concerned, you bought a $10,000 watch off us, right? If, uh, if you can sell someone else for 25 K that's your business. 
Okay. So let's see. We well, have got another question here from Mario. Wait, 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 what up? Yes. So now Mario says, who determines market value, buyer or seller? Well, Correct. It's both, you know, supply and demand determines market value. Um, so switch the camera to one. Yeah. yeah. So oh. supply and demand. Supply and demand determines market value. I know people in the watch market, you have retail prices and some people feel like these are the prices that should hold because there's some magical price that the manufacturer comes up with. Uh, some people kind of like that. I, I personally hate that. I believe in free markets and the prices, whatever the price is based on supply and demand. So both buyers and sellers and the equilibrium between both are going to determine the price of an NFT of a watch. Or an or an NFT on a watch. I kind of like a, a no next comment about his mama. It says <laughs> something is only worth what someone will give you for it. Yes, or what someone will let it go for if you really want it. So I yeah, mean, this is just another way of saying supply and demand works. Yep. You know, so, I I, I uh, heard this I heard this explained best once. Um, says, oh, yeah, hold on. So I, I, I heard it explained best once. It was um, you know, the market. People say, what's the market rate? Like the market rate is where the demand from suppliers matches the demand from sellers. Sim simple as that, as Dan was saying. And I think we get into these hype cycles sometimes. Like I, I saw one of the comments here says, you know, we're in a recession. Um, don't want to sound like uh, combative. We're not in a recession. The economy is a flat. I'm, I'm a Brit. The economy is flat over here, but when we're not in a recession, um, you know, that means a very specific thing. Right. But when when you have all this negative news about recession, this Etc. Etc. Wars that, um, you know, you your natural instincts say prices must be going down. But then I go look at the FTSE 100 and the prices are freaking flying, um, because the demand for people wanting to buy British stocks is is incredibly high. It has nothing to do with the economy. So the market for British stocks is completely detached from the British economy. It's probably Chinese buyers. I don't know. Um, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a huge stock expert. Um, but it just. I, I, it's the same. It's the same in any market. Like, um, could could give you countless examples. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna keep taking questions, guys. But I just want to remind you of one thing. Um, in the in the chat, there's a pinned comment that takes you to the Luxury IO official Twitter page. Go there if you use Twitter. Go follow us on Twitter. There. Uh, it's not called Twitter anymore. It's called X. Sorry, X. I hate that. Uh, go to go to X. And follow Luxury Official on X. We're going to be giving away a couple of um, Omega swatches very soon. So one of the conditions is to follow Luxury Official on X. So go over there and do that if you're interested. And um, let's go ahead and take some more questions. Where were we? Okay. So uh, Mario says, most respectful guys, just participate in the conversation. Yeah, Mario, good. I appreciate the respect. Appreciate the question. It's actually good because we can get to go back and forth on this. And discuss this and have multiple opinions on it so i appreciate you keeping it very respectful yeah okay in this market what is more profitable yeah, selling watches just... royal exilia economy on left and right they're not selling yeah, yeah. it's the next trend to get market watch it is going to the current shift yeah. into raffles <laughs> uh price determined by market supply and demand of course uh paul thorpe hey paul, paul thorpe i don't know what link I guess Paul, if you're talking, if you're referring to the luxury website, is is luxury without the second u l u x r y dot i o, but uh, on on sorry, not on Twitter, on X is luxury l u x r y official. Is that right, Paul? That's correct. That's correct. All right, cool. Um, what else? Uh, That's pretty much it. What's your arm raffle to switch back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we Tim. still sell watches. We still sell watches, guys. Yeah, Tim, that's funny, but um, you know, in a times like these, like we explained, we gotta be you gotta be pretty creative. Um, you can't beat yourself your head against the wall and keep buying watches that depreciate in value if you're not selling them fast enough. You have to play with the actual watches that you hold on inventory versus your turnover versus all the creative solutions you can find in times like these so uh yeah afternoon brothers john from orlando uh look forward to shopping by after christmas hopefully to get my first gmt i'll reach out before stopping in to coordinate and see what works best with you folks i got you uh what was it john oh thank you, you, got, a little, you got a little, got a little, little milk in your mouth no, my bad 
They got the cameras for <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. So, John, looking forward to seeing you. Come by. Let's drink a cafecito. Let's talk some watches, talk some crap, have some fun, and I'll help you out getting your first GMT. Okay, Mario Diaz, candid question. Do you think a lot of people got into wa the watch market? Now there's a correction. People dumping that should have never entered. But that's just reality in any market. It, it You know, people chase what everybody's chasing. You know, it's psychology. Um, you know, stock market is going up. Just like real estate into 2008, people were buying. I knew people that had never invested in real estate telling me, oh, yeah, you never lose money on real estate. Buy real estate. And uh, and then, you know, the market crashed. But then does that mean that you should never have been invested in real estate? Well, maybe you shouldn't have, you know, participated in FOMO, um, whether it's real estate, crypto or watches. So you really have to determine, am I investing money that I can afford to lose? You know, am I investing only a percentage of my portfolio? So if I do lose it, it doesn't affect me as, as overall. So it's not. A lot of people, yeah, shouldn't have been investing in watches. That's 100%. But whether it's watches or crypto, that will never change. Most people shouldn't probably be blindly buying anything. And they will continue to do it because that's, those are humans. That's that's in our nature. So, um, what else here? Do you see anything else, Charlie? Jim, they come from the stream. Oh, from the stream. Yeah, that's uh yeah, we're about to end the stream pause, so maybe another occasion. Uh let me see this here. I work in finance. Actually, I'm an analyst and agree with you more. I've always said you're better to be invested in something than not being in at all. Not financial advice. Haha. Well, JB, thank you. Great comment. Um, I actually worked in in the financial services for a couple of years and then in alternative finance for about 15 years. So um, I'm familiar with the fact that there's a lot of assets that people don't consider investments that can be investments, depending on, on how educated you are before you buy them, when you buy them, when you sell them, and how you allocate your money into them. So uh, let's take a couple more questions and wrap this up. When, Whenever you get investment advice from a barber, time to get <laughs> Yeah, true. Uh, buy open. <laughs> From property, <laughs> buy okay. ocean from property, and you will never. And you will clean your house. And you will clean your house. Okay, let's, let's see. This whole thing seems shady. Buying NFTs with crypto, someone else holding your physical assets, selling NFTs with crypto, treating watches as investment is for suckers. Um, again, guys, if you generalize, if you you know, if you just believe in generalizations, whether it's watches, stocks, or crypto, uh, in the long run. I think you're going to be disappointed. So things are not as black and white as stocks are investments, watches are not investments, and vice versa. It's just depends on how educated you are and your objective. That's it. Okay, and yeah, this is live. Paul, you have any last minute tips, uh, suggestions, any information you want to add? Um, yeah, no, just just thank, thanks for everyone's time uh, tuning in today. I think, um, yeah, great, great questions, by the way. I think my, my key my key thoughts to leave everybody on is you know uh, and NFTs get associated a lot with um, let's I'll say the word scams and such they do um, but the technology is so much more than that um, I, I've worked a lot in the space with like real B2B applications there's so many applications of blockchain and NFTs in you know incredibly boring stuff in governments in big companies that you're probably buying things from right um and i think th those are the technologies we're really going to see taking over the way business is done on the internet over the next 10 20 years um what we're doing here is using that decentralized trust uh so ultimately you know you're trusting crm jewelers uh with these with these watches they're in their custody uh, they'll be vaulted um, and we're using technology to be able to extend that trust from one store in brickwell miami to global that's that's the objective here um that that's that's my key takeaway really Right. And, and I mean, trust is always going to be a factor. Even when you invest in stocks, there is trust. You find out, you know, companies are, are embezzling money and even even listed stocks. Um, so the, the, the advantage here is that technology makes it a lot more trustworthy and easier for people to invest and not worry about those things. Correct. Yeah, exa exactly. Um, and, you know, so, some of the technology we've got is some of the technology we're working on um, is going to add an extra layer of that with a kind of like a daily, daily uh, 
proof that the items are where, where we say they are to add that extra level of confidence to the uh, end consumer through a prop popular project called um, Chainlink. Yeah, so this guy, I think, puts it perfectly. Uh, crypto is a scam to the people who do not understand what it really does, uh, can do bull, bear market charts, etc. So, I mean, the, the reality is that people are lazy and people just want um, give you a perfect example. to get rich quick, get rich overnight. And then once they invest in things like this with little education, with little information, with little preparation, it's then they complain. And everything is a scam so they generalize just because they're lazy but that's just reality and that creates opportunity for the people that actually want to educate themselves and that makes stupid comments well um I'll say, I'll, say, I'll say this how how would you feel if you bought bitcoin 12 months ago yeah. you'd be pretty happy how would you feel if you bought it was it 18 months ago not so happy how would you feel if you bought it 24 months ago really happy any period of time longer than that you're a very very happy person um you know so bitcoin's in low 40ks again now if it if it breaks past uh, 70k at any point um any point in the future if you'd have bought it at any point you've made money um from a from an investment speculative point of view um so it's it, it's hard to say market timing in general with investments market timing is the worst strategy in the world unless you're some hedge fund genius which i'm certainly not um you know should I, should I invest in corn futures next week for what's going on in March? I have no idea what the weather's like in Kansas, right? I'll probably lose my money. Or uh, well, maybe I'll make I'll, just as good a chance I'll make money as lose money. I have no idea what's going on. Um, the best investment strategy, and I, I'd say this to anyone, is literally just to allocate percentage of your funds which match your objectives into different areas. So if you treat crypto as a spe speculative part of your portfolio and you're comfortable to put 1% into uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and some other blue chip um, crypto projects, if crypto does what people like me think it's going to do in 10 years time, you'll be very happy that you did that. If you're a person who is a bit of a gambler at heart and you want to put 10 percent of your portfolio in crypto and you know what you're doing, maybe you'll make some money between now and next year. Maybe you'll lose a lot of money between now and next year. It all really just matches your personality, um, your objectives um, and your interests as well. I like this so, guy. Real quick, real quick. Let's let's let, let me answer G, G B real quick. Uh, JB, just call a store, ask Sandy for my phone number, and she'll help you out. So it's 305-349-5000. Call a store, and I'll help you out after. All right. This uh, is that's a couple of the last few uh, more important. Okay. So it says more yeah, important to do your research before you buy. Exactly. Is that positive? That's the best thing there. Um, and then Mario Diaz says, will be, regu will be regulated entity like SEC or real estate that will be overseas this entity? Will be any regulated entity? Maybe and and maybe right. that, yeah. oh yeah so they're asking like who's going to regulate of oh, obviously there's going to be regulation coming into the market uh there there already is regulation um and and it will be standardized over time I think <laughs> I agree with this <laughs> thanks for scams but nobody's talking about that yes <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> okay look look right here yes, yeah Olson yeah put Olson's comment up um these are unconventional and untraditional methods for purchasing holding and investing in watches i can understand their reluctance people need to do their research that's 100 percent true they have to do their research for any investment uh and obviously these are unconventional because people have been taught that the traditional way or the, the only way to do something is a traditional way but um especially now with all advancements in technology you're just going to have a lot more efficiency and, and I welcome these these technological improvements, even into the watch market, because I'm a numbers guy. So the more standardized you make watches, the easier you, the more accessible you make them to the general public, the better it is, in my opinion. Well, I think that happens across the board with a lot of things. Look at gold is standardized. You buy it at a price that's marketed. Diamonds, you know, there's the wrap report. There's just, there existed none of this for diamonds. I mean, for watches. Now is when we're getting watch shirts. We're getting this. But there's never been analytics. There's never been data. There's never been anybody valuing and determining. It's all like more or less like just the word between. I, how do I know about how to buy watches? Well, just from experience, and it, it just it's always constantly changing. I always have to figure out, damn, what do I pay for this? What do I pay for this? What do I pay? And my best knowledge guess is how many people times post in chats. And I guess I can use that as a data, but that's not really. I mean, that's like, just totally inefficient. That's, yeah, it's super inefficient. 
So it kind of sucks. And that's yeah, going to end. Because... What, what, I, what I'd add on that is just, you know, for, for a lot of this technology, we're in an early adopter phase. I use the analogy of taxis. So I'm, I'm from the UK, live in London for a while. And when I was younger, it would just be black cabs. You literally just pull them down on the street, get in them. Um, whereas now uh, Uber or Lyft is like 99% of my uh, my cab journeys, right? Um, you know, so, you know, those first people who were using Uber 10 years ago wasn't me uh, when I when I was that age. Um, they were the early adopters. I was sort of a middle age, middle adopter. Now even people like my mom will use Ubers. She's a late adopter. In, in this space, we're definitely in the early adopter phase to be clear. So yeah, not, not expecting, you know, 90% of people to get excited about these methods, but the, these are, these are the first stage of these sorts of technologies, which are going to, you're going to start seeing this, uh, yeah. so many spaces. Uh, this comment in, is interesting. And, uh, guys, this idea isn't a bad one, but make sure you have your legal ducks in a row or you'll be shut down by the SEC for operating on unregistered securities exchange. And I, I, and yes, eventually this will, when this becomes tokenized, if you don't, instead of buying an NFT for a hundred thousand dollar protect, you instead believe that you want, you know, you want to invest 1% of your, of the value of that in an NFT. In other words, you want to buy a fraction of that, that even right now will require, um, to be, you know, for the entity to be registered with the SEC, but just NFTs themselves are not don't have to be registered with the SEC as far as I understand and all yep. the legal information I have read. Yeah, we, we've what discussed it extensively. It's, it's when you frack, basically securities are fractionalized interests in, in a business typically, right? So when you're, when you're buying stocks or shares, essentially it's fractionalized ownership, right? Um, that's why we're starting with uh, individual watches. Um, but this is something we would definitely like to get down, get to in the future, but um it is a bit more complex. So yeah. Yeah. Appreciate yeah, where that. there is an ETF, if you if you provide any access to for like fractionalizing uh investing in, in a portion of the asset, like whether it's an ETF or um through tokenization, right? It's gonna be it's gonna be a registered security, which we're not that's not how we're doing it at the beginning. That's, that's very wrong. Please engage in legal counsel. Okay. All right good yeah okay so guys thank you so much for joining today uh for participating in the live stream i know this is a little bit off topic but this is something we've been working on for about a year now with uh paul and and our other web3 partner um go to luxury official luxury official on twitter on x, on x. go to luxury Long official on twitter. x follow us there uh, for a chance to win some omega swatches which we'll be announcing soon and uh, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them to CRM Jewelers because we believe yeah. in this project and uh, and guarantee, not guarantee, but we assure you that this is not a scam. This is something we believe in in the long run. Um, and yeah. So I just want to say thank you for everybody for your feedback. Thank you for your comments. Thank you guys for keeping it respectful. Um, I appreciate everybody who gave opinions in a respectful way and were able to go ahead and conversate. So uh, thanks to everybody. Thank you for everybody who gave us advice and all that. Um, and yeah, till next time, guys. We'll see you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, appreciate it, everyone. Thank, Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Bye bye.